Hey everyone, welcome back. They finally arrived, my iView camera glasses. Uh, to me, camera-based sunglasses have always kind of been like that mall kiosk, last minute kind of Christmas gift, low quality, with some uh, in-house sensor that looks pretty bad, in-house lens, but I think these are actually gonna be pretty good. Um, as you know, I make a lot of car videos, but these actually have a Sony sensor. The Sony 8 megapixel sensor actually comes from a real digital camera. It's made by a real camera company and I think will actually perform quite well. Uh, this is the Vista model, and I haven't seen a lot of the Vista model on YouTube yet. Apparently they're a lot newer, but the Rain Cone and the other model they have uh, have actually performed quite well. But the reason I got these is the 135 degree um, or field of view. And the larger field of view, when I saw the video, even though it was pretty low quality, the guy was in bad lighting, and I saw the view angle, and I thought, wow, that must be exactly what he sees. And uh, that's why I wanted to give these a shot. So let's see what's inside. So as you can see here, we have HD 4K video at 24 frames a second, HD video at 1080p, but at 60 frames a second for the video, which is what I'm going to be using it for, the 70 angle camera lens, 70 degree, IP66 weather resistant technology, so that's how resistant they are to weather. Uh, the premium tier 90 frames and UV 400 polarized lenses, so that should be good blocking out the sun. Let's see the specs here if you want to read them yourselves. And there we go. And this is the 64 gig model. Okay. These boxes are pretty nice. So first off, Okay, everything came right out. You have the instructions booklet, warranty card, some stickers, which, no thanks, and a little video tutorial. I think I will actually watch that because I want to watch the, um, the way to actually activate the camera, but also change between uh, which uh, video mode I have. I want to make sure I'm doing the right video mode and stay on 1080p 60 frames or 1080p 30 frames if they have that. And uh, you can pause here if you want to read. If you look at that, 1440p, which is uh, about 2K. I can do that at 30 frames a second, which is pretty good. Plus, I can put the... Uh, I can put an extra um, micro SD card in, which makes 64 gigs a lot more usable, which is uh, nice. All right. Let's see how it looks. All right. First thing I see is clear lenses. This is if you don't need the sunglasses effect, which would be in low light uses. Or perhaps if I don't like the lenses they come with, so that's good to have. Next you have a cleaning cloth, which should come with all sunglasses. Feels kind of like, uh, almost like waterproof khakis that you get at like Costco. Doesn't really feel like it has any kind of cloth to it. This side's a little better, but it just feels like that thin, tightly woven uh, nylon material that wouldn't really do too well on actual glasses micro USB cable, which you can see, and here are the glasses. The case does feel pretty sturdy, I'll give it that. And here they are. A little bigger than I thought, but uh, hey, not too bad. Hopefully they're not too small in this area here, curving around my face too tight, but we're going to find out. Nice smooth action there. Cool, and there's the uh, main button, I guess. Let's charge them up, see how they do. Okay, so looks like they're recording now. I see a red light. I don't know how I do, because in my mirror I can't see one. But that's good if you're trying to record in stealth, and hopefully that means it wouldn't... The red light wouldn't appear in the actual film, you know, the video bleeding in. But uh, as I'm sitting exactly now, bottom of my peripheral vision is about here where my hand is just below the BMW logo and uh, top is roughly about here the warning label on the sun visor 
but if I'm looking directly ahead, I'm right here. That's exactly where my head level is, what I'm looking at. Still see that red light going, but middle of my sight is right at the bottom of the green, where the green ends on those trees ahead. So uh, right now I'm not looking at the uh, speedometer or anything. I'm just looking at roughly here. Main vision's about here. So I actually like the lenses. They're not uh, colored or anything. They definitely, they say they're polarized. They definitely block some sun out, but they're not bad. Um, I know it's kind of a gray day, but at least there's some brightness. I watched a comparison video of the Rincon, the other model, Rincon, and the uh, Horizon and the Vistas, and uh, the footage looked kind of bluish, kind of hazy, but these are apparently newer, so hopefully they'll be better. But the uh, view angle on some of the other models was much more zoomed in than even with a GoPro on my forehead. Uh, so it's a much wider angle on the GoPro. But these have a better uh, position. These are actually right just barely above the eyes, which means the lens is probably two or three inches lower than where the GoPro sits on my forehead. So let's see, I'm gonna, without using my eyes to look down, once I get to the straight here, I'm going to use my head to look down at the instrument cluster and back. Yeah. Roads are pretty smooth here, but hopefully we'll see how the image stabilization works. I've heard that can be edited out. In most videos, I've never done it myself, but the problem with that is, is that zooms in a little farther. So if these are already zoomed in too far, then uh, then I'd really be out of luck. So I'm going to put my head back on the headrest, which I think is having an angle like this, but yeah. It was mostly slush yesterday on the roads, but they salted in advance and they've taken care of it. I don't see any uh, any snow on the main part of the road at all. So, guess I'm going to work today. See what happens when I open the sunroof. Just the this part. Let's more light into the cabin here. Maybe that'll look better, maybe it'll look worse. These feel okay on, on my head. Uh, one of the nose cushions, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, had come off in the packaging during shipping. I tried to put it back on, didn't quite go on exactly as it looked like it should. Maybe that'll settle here now in a little bit, but other than that, the quality feels pretty good. Um, most of the weight's in the back, so it's it's almost kind of resting off of my temple and my cheekbone rather than my uh, my nose, so that feels good. They do feel a little small this way. I don't have the widest head in the world, but I do feel a little bit of tension right about right around my temple. Let's see. Hey, red light's still blinking. at 
mirror directly, looking down at the gauge cluster, and then a normal driving position. I'm trying to think, because the GoPro's angle, even though it's taller, it's wider, so it goes up higher and it looks like you're looking down more, but I'm trying to think of a way that this viewing angle could be better, perhaps. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, driving on a racetrack, don't want people to see your speed, but as of right now, I can't really think of anything that would make this better, if this has the same viewing angle as the other iView glasses, but... I don't know if it does. The lenses are nice and clear. No issues there. Um, I, Even though they, I feel some weight and some tension on the temple, I feel like I could wear these for a long time. I think it also is like that so they don't shake on your actual head. I feel my body moving up and down with the car. Uh, so I feel obviously the bumps in the road. Even though this is a comfy car, it's pretty rough roads. But I feel like they haven't moved a millimeter on my actual face itself. So it's not like sunglasses where they might move in the wind or if you're going up and down, they might come off your nose a little bit. These feel planted. They feel like they are bolted directly to my head. So maybe on a racetrack or on smooth roads, that would be a good thing. They do look like decent sunglasses. I've seen Oakleys with this kind of style before. I'm gonna itch under my eye. Put it back down. But uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about the actual glasses themselves, the way they feel, other than the way that that nose piece came off. I just am worried about the angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back. I have my regular driving position saved and go down and see if that gives me a better driving angle because I can drive comfortably like this, no problem. It feels a little bit far away from my arms, but I can adjust for that. And with this, I definitely see the gauge cluster much more in my line of sight. So if I was going to do this with a, I don't know, Lamborghini or something on the track, I would want the... Uh, gauge cluster in sight more so than anything else. From here to here would be my goal. I can still reach the pedals fine. So after reviewing the footage, what's my verdict? So let's focus on the pros first. The first thing is, is the viewing angle is actually pretty wide. Uh, for other cameras in this class, for the same price point, that you can actually get a pretty wide shot. I'd like to have it wider in this application, but for the class, it's, uh, the viewing angle is pretty wide. Uh, they were actually quite wearable. Um, not just wearable in the sense of having them on your head, keeping more hands free, but they actually felt pretty comfortable, and they also felt lightweight. Uh, the weight was in the back, and they felt pretty solid and attached to my face, so I felt like I could have them on for a long period of time for no problem. Um, the video quality, in my opinion, for this price point was pretty bad. Uh, I thought it was grainy, I thought it was uh, a little blurry. I've seen worse, but I just didn't think it was worth it. Uh, there's no way to adjust the lens up and down. For example, I was putting my hands up and you couldn't even see it. So I was trying to show where the uh, lens is pointing based on where it's on my head, and you can't adjust that. Uh, the audio quality, in my opinion, was pretty bad. Um, I've seen, I've had a lot worse, I've heard a lot worse, but I just think for the uh, price point, uh, an equivalent GoPro or even an older model GoPro has better audio even though you probably would use an external mic. But the biggest thing is, is the video image stabilization was absolutely atrocious, probably even non-existent. It looked like I was riding on a horse or something. <laughs> but uh, if you have better uh, video editing software to edit in post uh, to stabilize the video, then you might be able to use that. But 
I tried using it in the uh, programs that I use, iMovie and uh, Corel Video Studio, and I had absolutely no luck. It made no difference. I left it unedited in these videos, but even when I edited it, it really didn't make much of a difference at all. So I guess the next question is, would I buy them? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, I've in fact, I've already returned them. Otherwise, I would have done a closing video of me holding them and talking about them, but I just wanted my money back. Uh, I think an older GoPro, like a uh, 7 Black or even an uh, 8 Black, now that the 9 has come out, with uh, with some other accessories you can buy, maybe even buying one used, uh, would be a better buy for the price. I do like that you had a lot closer to eye level, but at that point, I mean, there's so much you can do with GoPros and angles and mounts, and I think that's a, that's a better bet.